Hello, camp pros, and welcome to the Camp Hacker Podcast. My name is Travis Allison. I'm a summer camp marketing and strategy consultant, and I help camps translate what they do so families insist on sending their children to summer camp. My name is Dan Weir. I'm the director of camping services at Frost Valley YMCA. Frost Valley is a year-round camp, conference, education facility up in the Catskill Mountains, about two and a half hours from New York. And this is going to be my 22nd summer uh, working at camp. My name is Joe Richards. I'm the executive director at Pierce Williams Christian Center, which is a United Church of Canada summer camp and retreat facility. And we're located in Fingal, Ontario, but halfway between Detroit and Toronto. My name is Angie Atkinson, and I am the camp director at Camp Lantern Creek, which is in East Texas, and we are an all-girls sleepaway creative leadership camp. And my name is Patty Sampson, and I am in the process of starting my own camp in uh, Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, and I'm also the co-founder of Patrick Marketplace. And also a podcaster. And also a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us for the first time, Patty. Uh, so you are beginning a camp. What has that, what's that process been like for you, starting from scratch? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely been a learning experience. I keep saying it's both exciting and terrifying. I feel like I've jumped off a cliff without a parachute, but in the best possible way. Yes. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm learning a lot, connecting with my community and making great relationships. So it's been good. That's awesome. That's awesome. I see a lot of your organization in your background. For those listening and not watching on YouTube, Patty's got a good, a good organizational <laughs> Several well-placed post-it notes. <laughs> Do you know what? Those are all, I'm so sappy. Those are all just like quotes to inspire me. <laughs> well, honestly, if that works, that's awesome. A great idea. <laughs> so Patty, I wonder for you, what was your first moment that you really felt like camp is my thing? I could do this forever. Oh, that's such a great question. I... I was never a camper. I uh, started as a counselor at 18 and kind of immediately, like as soon as I arrived at camp and looked around and went, hey, wait a second, because I'd planned on becoming a teacher or um, a social worker. And then as soon as I realized I could still work with children and have an impact and not have to get them to sit still for hours a day kind of thing, I was like, you can do this for real as a career, I'm in. So from that moment. <laughs> that, that's brilliant. So Patty, the last thing, what is your podcast and how can we listen to it? Oh yeah, it's um, the Wreckheads and Camp Nerds podcast and you can find us on iTunes or Stitcher or go to our um, Patrick Marketplace website and find us there. Brilliant. And well, thanks for being been here, Patty. Guest. Travis has been a guest. Check out his episode. It's awesome. Yeah, right on. Yeah, and I'm really excited about the episode you've been promoting lately about alumni stuff with Jeff Bradshaw. Who oh, is, he's brilliant. Yeah, He is very brilliant. I love Jeff. Awesome. Well, Angie, thanks for being back. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. It's awesome. What? Um, so tell us a bit about Lantern Creek. It's nice to have you after a long hiatus. My fault, not yours. Um, can, you, can you give us a, an overview of what Lantern Creek's mission is? Yes, so um, we we started uh, seven years ago, so this will be my seventh summer, and our mission is to really build girls to uh, see and feel their own light, their own worth, and take it out into the world to make the world a better place. Uh, so we do that through a lot of uh, work around um, art processing, so they will uh, just get to create um, we have everything from, um, I don't know, painting to woodworking and doll making and knitting, and it's all process based. It's not product focused. Yeah. Um, we, I really love. We have a, a whole program called Rosie's Riveters, which is teaching our girls how to use power tools. So the other aspect is to really like break girls out of the mold that they can only be one thing. Especially middle school girls, in their brains, they tend to. Uh, just focus and say that they can only be like the girl that's sport, a sporty girl or an art kid. Um, so here we let them, we encourage them to um, rewire kind of their brains yeah. creatively so that they can do new things um, and, and be whoever they want to be. Um, we do a lot of, um, we really like focus a lot on mentoring our staff as well. So um, my, our executive director, um, I really appreciate she just lives that because she mentors me so well. And then we get to mentor our staff even through the rest of the year. Um, 
way outside of what camp does. So yeah. yeah. That's one of my favorite things that we do. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming back, Angie. We really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And so today we thought um, it would be time to address um, this coming summer. I mean, we've talked real specific and more general things, like this things you need to think of, but this is something that I think applies to this summer. I wanted to ask the question of what should you be doing now to prep your staff for this coming summer? So what can you do in the last, for some of you, it's only a month now until staff arrives. Some of you, it's two months. And what do you do in that, that last block of time to get your staff ready for the summer? And I'm just going to throw that out there. I, I, I don't have a, an opening more. It's, I'm curious to know what you folks do. So for me, I think um, the biggest thing that I focus on at this time of year is just to make sure that there's no questions left unasked and unanswered. Um, yeah. So making sure they have all the information that's needed. And so as part of that, I kind of draw on questions that were asked previous years that I might have you know, forgotten to mention. So things like, um, what's the weather going to be like when we arrive at camp? So for my previous camp, it was um, a cold for the first month that you were there. Yeah. And so we would tell them, like, bring all of your long clothes and then you know, head home and, and bring your shorts and stuff when July starts. Um, so just making sure, yeah, anticipate what they're going to ask and, uh, and do a, like a Q&A session or um, give them some sort of document or have a, like a online chat, that sort of thing. Yeah. Hmm. So um, do you, you use a tool for, for them to chat beforehand and for you to communicate other than email? Yeah. So typically we would do a Facebook group. Um, and I know some other people do like Slack, that sort of thing, but uh, that was never something that, that I did at the time, but and who knows in the future, maybe. <laughs> right. So, right. Yeah. Cool. We've moved our staff entirely to, to Slack and we found it's a communication issue. So this time of year to get our staff ready, it's all about communication because what we're doing, like Patty says, is just sharing information, you know, what is camp like and how can they talk to other staff? We moved away from uh, Facebook simply because it's so crowded with other stuff mm -hmm. that you sometimes get lost in the in the volume of of stuff that's rolling through Facebook. Um, and plus, for documents, as you know, Travis from the Summer Camp Pros Group, it's difficult to do searches of old topics or to find old documents or to you know somebody restarts a conversation. Um, and, and on Slack, that's much more, uh, for us, it's much more manageable uh, as we go through. And the one thing that we've done this year differently than other years is we choose one, right now we're on one day a week where we send out a big update so that we're not interfering with all of the staff's time when something comes to our mind, right? So my camp director just puts it in um, on Wednesdays. He sends out a PDF full of stuff that the staff are supposed to read. And um, our theory is that right now it can wait until next Wednesday, right? We don't need to be intruding their time with an update, you know, at 10 o'clock on a Friday night because we thought of it at that moment. So, Right. And Joe, how do you, and I know that there's, there's two of you sort of directly involved, but you also have your administrator, Shannon. How do you, where do you store those ideas for the time that, that goes out once a week? How do Right, right now, Matt is taking care of all of that. Um, and if I, I have my own channel on Slack, so I have something called Joe's Thoughts, which it, uh, we haven't forced anybody to join. But if I have thoughts, I just put it there. Um, so those aren't staff updates per se. Staff updates tend to be things that are like, send in your police check, send in your health form, send in this, yeah. you know, do that. Those are very specific. So um, it, Matt is responsible for, for taking care of all of that storage. And it tends to be him who's, who's creating that document without our, um, without much input from Shannon or myself. Cool. As a side note, it's fun for me to keep using Matt's name in this thing. Cause he has to edit our shows. <laughs> so we keep using his name in vain. <laughs> Hi Matt. Thank you. Um, Angie, what, what, what are you supposed to do? Um, so we, because we're a little bit smaller, my, my counselor staff coming in, I have 15 of them, mm. um, makes Facebook still really conducive for us. And we, uh, the way that I approach it is to really intentionally start building community with them. Um, and we, I create a new Facebook staff group every year. So I might keep like files that I reshare 
um, year to year, but it's a brand new group every year. And um, what we, we just started it um, this past week and I always start with an intro video. So everybody, I ask everybody to um, post their own intro video yeah. and um, just a little bit of like, basically like an icebreaker um, online. So they have to introduce themselves and then I always ask a would you rather question. Um, and then from there, I use it to uh, communicate information, but really from a sharing a why perspective. So I do a video on, we sing a lot at camp, like so much. So we include um, Dropbox, our songs and our song book, especially for the new staff, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really overwhelming. Um, but I include a video of like why we sing. And then I also do a video on, um, why we don't have tech at camp. And um, before that, we also do um, with the three main directors, we do like an information and expectation. So that we're probably gonna put out um, an ask from them once a week, once every other week, and they need to get back to us. Um, I set expectations for how quickly they need to respond to email um, and that they need to be checking their email and Facebook yep. frequently. So it's just kind of building in some accountability and responsibility from th that. Um, and then the last thing that I just started last year that I found really beneficial is to start the conversation around self-care mm. um, for them now. So what we were running into um, was that our staff were arriving at camp and really struggling um, to... Uh, with communication out with people outside. So like with their friends, with their family, because they didn't know how to set up expectations with them before they arrived. So they didn't know, um, you know, how to say like, I'm not available. And yeah. Um, yeah. then they'd have, you know, that all that FOMO and yeah. um, it was causing a lot of stress and anxiety for them. So we uh, started last year with talking to them about, time off and you know giving them that information of like here's when you will be on time off um i can i can give them like the specific uh between session dates but telling them that they're not going to know their like daily time off until the week before mm -hmm. and that they like giving them um like starting sentences of how yeah. to say that yeah. to their parents because we were finding a lot of uh, our staff were coming in and they were like but my parents expect me to to call them every day and they ultimately can't when they're here. Right, right. Um, so that was super helpful last summer yeah, that we're gonna kidding. do again. Yeah. That's so great. That's so thoughtful. Thank you, Angie. Yeah. And we do, um, we also, I do that, like I do those videos um, through Facebook Live within my group. Right. Um, and the one in particular, the two actually that in particular that are really um, helpful is to do the time off one that way. And then we also do one on how to write lesson plans because um, they're able to interact with us. Even, even if they can't catch it live, um, yeah. it just creates a slightly different feel to it. Um, yeah. So I really like that aspect of Facebook. Yeah. Way better than just tech stuff. That's so great. Yeah. 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 Dan, your, your, um, your staff, communication is a different game than Angie's because you have such a, a much bigger staff. Yeah. But what are the, what are the things that you encourage your directors to do to, to get good, establish good stuff with them? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so I think that that's probably the biggest difference. You know, I was kind of taking notes from uh, what everyone just said, and we're not doing anything revolutionary compared to what's already been described. But the biggest difference is that we're um, doing it, where it's branched out and we found that if there's a uh, with a you have large groups so we have like one group on Facebook that is all of our staff but really what they're hearing from is the the group that is um, the, the one they're interacting with was is their their core group in work so like they're interacting with the 10 people that they will interact with for majority of the summer the most and then for the rest of what we're doing it's really based on um, as a whole like just more broadcasting and uh, and reiterating, uh, not so much the paperwork. Um, we try to use Facebook more as a hype machine um, and creating a sense of belonging than necessarily um, using it for uh, um, employee paperwork or that sort of thing. We try to use all the employee paperwork more with email. So trying to do that distinguished difference of, of it. Um, we don't have Slack um, uh, partially because of our size and volume of 
but to be frank, it's just it's it's a lot for the amount of accounts we would need to get. Yeah. Um, we are considering it, um, but that's that's kind of where we fall into it. Um, I'm very conscious of not overwhelming um, our staff. So uh, we're a large organization, meaning that we have a fundraising um, branch of our our organization, and they will start with like getting emails from them right away. So I'm very conscious of. Uh, making sure our messaging is about getting here and feeling a sense of belonging and not being overwhelmed um, and tend to save most of the work for when they get here. Um, at the same point in time, like I, I found a podcast episode from Dan Pink the other night that I really enjoyed. It was um, just looking at leading and innovating with excellent with Tom Peters. It's a, it's a 20 minute um conversation they have and it's really like like management 101 and i'm going to be emailing that later today to everyone that's managing people just as a uh, love for you to listen to this and start getting into the mindset that you're coming in and taking care of people so it's it's ultimately that balance of not overwhelming uh, andrew's saying it well with talk about self-care um i think that starts with um how we talk with our staff as well too and how much we put out there so i loved hearing that joe was only doing post once a week because I, I, I do think you could easily overwhelm them without them knowing and um, yeah I mean I like and people just don't forget that like they're my I, like I talked to my sister all the time they're, they're going through finals right now they're starting to prep the end of their college season yeah. and if you email something now it's it, whether you have good intentions or not you could break them <laughs> you know and uh, uh, the last thing you at, at least break their brain anyway yeah <laughs> you don't want that either but <laughs> no, it's just, it's funny. Like I, I, I used to broadcast constantly and all the time. Yeah. And instead what I do now is I, I say like, if you want a constant update, this is, we'll be posting to this one Facebook group. If you want to connect with your, uh, your fellow employees and you're going to spend the most time with this, I'm going to use this group. And if you just want to stick to the important announcements, we'll be emailing those out to you directly and you don't need to worry. So try to like, let them know what they could tune out if they want to now. Um, yeah. yeah, Dan, it was, it was really bored and brilliant by Manush Amarodi that made us made the choice, which is a book and um, a choice to only do it once a week so that we weren't interrupting their time. Um, yeah, yeah. And the, and, and the major reason we went out to, to one thing is solely because I had people texting me and emailing and then Facebook messaging me. And then they would bring up a conversation on a different channel, like on a different platform. And I'd be like, well, when did we talk about this? And, and so by, we made the decision, this is three years, we're three years into Slack only. The, the concept is don't send me anything but Slack. We're not going to commit. Once contracts is signed, we're going to give you a login to your Slack and everything is on Slack so that we don't have to deal with where was it? Was it a text? Was it a Facebook message? Did you private message me on Instagram? Did you write like none of those things happen to us anymore. And it's, it's actually been refreshing to know that if I need to look up a conversation, I go to one place and, and find it. Yeah. And that has a good search function, right? Like that you right. can easily yeah. target. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's interesting that um, Ange brought up self care, and then Dan talked about exams and finals because that's something we kind of incorporate into that. So during the um, application process and the interview process, those are questions we ask, you know, what is your, your self-care practices? How do you deal with stress? Um, what supports will you need from us? Those sorts of things. And then sometimes people don't know. Sometimes people yeah. don't have that answer and they're like, oh, I don't get stressed out. It's fine. And I mean, you're going to get stressed out at camp. Yeah. So let's be real about it. So we're able to kind of incorporate that in and go, okay, well, between now and camp, think about it and like figure out how you deal with stress and what yeah. you can do. And, and, um, having finals and stuff is I think part of that <laughs> and then they'll come back and go, Oh yeah, I need a, you know, a nap when I'm stressed or whatever, go for a run. Yeah. I, I, um, I picked Dan. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, I'll be quick. Um, uh, so um, it's funny, you know, so like I, I have year round directors that work for me. Um, always uh, every, every year or two, I have a new one that comes on because we have a decent sized team and um, you know, to try and educate on why this is important. I use the example of, the dining hall. So if you've ever been at a meal at camp and they just had too many announcements during the meal, oh, you yeah. never really feel like you're eating. Like you just feel like you're listening. You're like, you're, you're eating, but you're not actually enjoying the meal. And that by um, 
paring down the announcements to a certain time and being concise about them. I, I, I love that Joe brought forward and brilliant. Um, it's a really great book to like, I, I used to email all the time and then I realized, Oh, when I email people feel like they need to respond. So yeah. if I email at one in the morning, I am, I'm doing the thing I hate. And uh, so then I got a program where I could decide what time the email gets. And so emails hit people's inboxes by eight 30 in the morning instead of them getting an email late at night. You know, it's, um, it's those little things. That was a really smart thing that somebody said. Um, Amanda, who's past, past podcast co-host, um, said that that's one of her things too. She's developed the habit of not sending emails or, or delaying when emails go. So she, again, is giving exactly that message. Um, and so if you look at summer camp professionals, a question that I posed this week, there's a ton of smart answers about how do you deal with your own stress? And you can see um, Amanda's link to that. I'll, uh, I'll make a little note. Maybe we'll try to get Matt to find it. Put that in the show notes. Also, Dan, can you... Um, chat message me the link to that Dan Pink uh, podcast and I'll yeah definitely um, and then we'll get Matt to throw that into the show notes yeah, Joe great, you great yeah Joe you had something to say I did I, it was um, every week I subscribe to the United Methodist camp and retreat ministries um, s'more mail that they send out once a week and what I found is it has great links to just stuff that's going on. And so today there was actually a link to a, a Dr. G webinar about anxiety and campers and parents and staff. And I thought, why do we, we don't need to keep this to ourselves as camp directors. We need to share this. If staff want to sit in on an hour long webinar that's free, then let's let them do it. And so, right, we post that into Slack and say, hey, listen, this is good for everybody to know. And so it's free, you can register, you know, and. And if you have 17 year olds who are self-conscious and aware enough, 17, 18, 19 year olds who can take that hour and, and watch a webinar about anxiety, then it'll, it'll help them in the long term as well. Yeah, that's brilliant. I, I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to say that um, I am doing a show with Dr. G will be in the podcast feed immediately after this episode. So more recent in your feed um, and uh, talking about some cool stuff she's doing for camp. So you can look forward to more Dr. G stuff on Camp Hacker. That's awesome. I wanted to say that um, some of the things that, that, that come to me at this point uh, in the year is that it can be it can sometimes be frustrating when you feel like, man, I just repeat myself over and over and over again. It's important to say to yourself, like, you know, the more I do, the longer I do this job, the more there are more new people. And so you have to develop some patience with the fact that, like Angie said from the beginning, you've got to repeat messages from last year. If you uh, have got a smart way to um, to reuse those messages, if that's applicable, or set yourself up with the notes to redo your videos every year, whatever it is, remember that think about your own longevity, but having to repeat the same things. I would also encourage... Um, You've all sort of described this in your own little ways, but I would encourage you to think about messages being um, broken up into little pieces and delivered in different ways. So if you're doing Facebook Lives to cover stuff that's in your staff handbook, then great. Let's just think about ways to do it in different methods or, um, you know, almost see if you get some staff who can create an audio book of your staff manual, just read it into uh, a microphone and send it out as a podcast and chapters, something that um, will allow people with different learning styles to get it different ways, depending on time. Um, you know, as camp directors that if anyone has the chance, the choice, they won't read it. They will do anything <laughs> to avoid reading a thing you send. Um, so pick a, pick a medium, pick a different medium, but reinforce it with the text or say, you know, in the parent handbook that I sent you or in the staff handbook that I sent you, uh, there is that. So I think it's important to, to remember that, um, that we should break it up and, and make it exciting in different ways. Even if we are saving all of those for one day a week, which really I think is such a, a great Pierce Williams idea. I love that. Um, the couple of things that, that folks have said that I wanted to just catch and, and make sure that I they bring Gabin in a way. She's not able to join us, but um, she's presented some amazing ideas for this over the years and a few I'd like to highlight. Uh, one is that, uh, that feeling of overwhelm. And this is... Um, something to set up now, but you know, will happen practically on the first day that staff arrives, that Wuro brings in their returning staff a day ahead of time. 
So they get a day at camp. And I know camps do the reverse. They bring in the new camp, the new camp staff for a day ahead of time and help them, you know, see the lay of the land and just get an introduction to some of the customs. But Waro's philosophy is that you you give staff, I mean, you want to encourage returning staff, you love in, in returning staff. So give them their moment of, you know, just the glee of being back together again and and um, all of that, that, that's not happening in front of new people and therefore would be intimidating. But give them a chance to to get to know each other, work in, and and Waro does the same with campers. They bring in, in returning campers three hours ahead of new campers to get it out of the system and then everybody switches together. The focus just pivots towards all right, we're here to make the, the new people feel welcome. So that's some prep that has to happen now. That's one of the things that I would recommend. Well, I'm, uh, I'm talking about awesome Gab stuff. We were uh, in Chicago together uh, last week, and she had these booklets that um, I begged her to let me have a copy of uh, that I th- couldn't wait to share. It's just uh, Gab and Jackie and the way they think of stuff, and then they put um, you know the nice design stuff of Gab's on it. It's not shiny from the the um, camera. So if you're listening to this, what I'm showing is the Camp Waro pre-interview guide. So before you even have a staff interview, you get mailed a physical guidebook that is 20 pages long that um, you know talks about being unplugged at camp. Um, you know, Waro is all about two days in French and two days in English. So there's a lot of stuff about language and positive community. So they just set all these expectations before and staff interview even. So if you're still looking for staff, that's one of the things you could do to get people ready is um, they, as part of their interview process, actually find a way to test people that they've read this pre-interview guide. So that was cool. That's a little bit on the side of what we're doing, but they have two other staff books that they hand out. One is um, a staff manual. These are all sort of small they're like half page size, so eight and a half by five. A little easier to fit in um, in a in a bag or a backpack to keep with you. And um, it's uh, because it's Gab. The design is stunning, and um, you know lots of cool history pieces. But they have taken you know the boring old staff manual that we used to try to make people sit down and read together for 15 minutes a day. Um, they've broken it all up and made it all graphic and broken into little pieces, been really thoughtful about things. So um, getting something like this together, maybe you're beginning the plan in April uh, of ways to do that for later, but um, just really cool, thoughtful things to give them ahead of time and tools. One last thing is called the staff agenda. And so they get another book that allows them to plan what their days are and um, it includes stuff for every day, uh, things that they have to plan, regular stuff in the day. So at least every single day of the summer, they have a, uh, some stuff ahead of time. Like just mind-blowing how thoughtful and awesome they are. And if you look carefully, I know this is back for, for people on YouTube. Um, if you look carefully, at the top of the page, there's a, a circled letter. It would be F or E, depending on this is a French day or an English day. Huh. Um, That's brilliant. And uh, so with lots of really cool things that Gap does ahead of time to make sure staff shows up feeling empowered and feeling like they understand some things and in control of, of lots of things. I think that's the most important part of the, the philosophy of this is you want your staff to feel in control. And um, when they're getting pulled in a lot of directions at this time of year, you and everybody's been so thoughtful about this give them small instructions little pieces at a time to do that uh are there any things that that you have found that you've been tweaking in the last two years that you're changing to make better in this process this year um so we do we use expert online training and we do an online abuse prevention training and i used to wait um to send it until the beginning of may um in attempts to not overwhelm them and i learned that that was doing the opposite because of the time of year um so i started sending all of that as soon as i hire so some of them um have had it since january because we but then there's been a few that we just hired um, like last week that are, are getting it. 
at this time, um, but that's a little bit unavoidable. But I used to, I used to wait so I could like batch create everything, and it was really more convenient for me. Um, but I'm I learned that it's better for the staff to to send it, and even when some of them choose to not do anything until yeah. I don't know midday, um, they at least know that they had the choice. Um, so I, I, to me, it's more just like modeling. Um, that back to that self care and respecting their time. Yeah, I I just want to um, you know EOT I think is is a brilliant platform and very smart. Um, uh, I I think the self care aspect is huge. You know, it, we have to assume the best of our staff, and you know if they fail a test or they don't have time for every module, instead of just assuming the worst when they come in, I think that's a great opportunity to start yes. coaching in a really considerate way to say, Hey, I noticed you were behind on this compared to some other people. I'm not saying this is stressing you out. How do I help you uh, this upcoming summer? Is this something bigger or were you, or you have something else going on? I just want to have a conversation about that. Coming up with this benign approach instead of um, sometimes we view this as the proper tool to screen out the bad apples. I've heard from <laughs> yeah. say, yeah. and um, I don't, uh, I, I don't know if I'd work for you. I don't know how to say it. Um, right. You know, like that's not the considerate way we should be acting. Um, but uh, I just, I think EOT is a brilliant platform. I think we have to be conscious of how we're using it. Great. Great. One of the you things, know, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Patty, I'll be quite short. One of, one of the opportunities I have as a speaker is to tell embarrassing stories about my life as a kit character. <laughs> um, one of my biggest lessons from my first summer was um, from a, a counselor who I'd found very frustrating, who showed up late to a staff meeting. We actually hadn't showed up to a staff meeting half an hour in. And I sort of got the meeting going, set it on its own. And then I went storming off to find her to ask her, you know, what was going on. And, um, <laughs> and it was, my frustration was very obvious. Let's say it that way. Um, and she just turned to me and said, look, I've been in the laundry room doing a camper's laundry because they peed the bed and I didn't want any of the other campers to know what was happening. And this is the only time I had to do it. And I was like, yes, thank you. I appreciate that lesson. I'm sorry you had to be the one to teach to me. I'm sorry I didn't know it ahead of time. So I like that, that idea, Dan, of assuming the best or learning to ask first and not just assume. Um, it's a great thing to establish as your own habit at this time of the year. Um, so thank you for that, Patty. Yeah, no, I was just going to say one of the things we started doing um, actually came from the staff and happened kind of organically. We had a, a new staff member who said, hey, you know, I, I'd really like to chat with someone about Camp Moore. Um, I'm not in your province. So is there anyone nearby that can chat? So I set her up with a returning staff member. They went out for coffee. And then some of the head counselors heard about this and they went on the Facebook group and as you do, um, creeped all the new people and kind of found out where they are and said, hey, can we invite them out to coffee and, uh, and get to know them and if they have any questions or anything. Um, and so that's something that kind of ended up happening year after year. And I thought it was so lovely that the, the staff kind of made this happen. Yeah. Um, it wasn't mandatory. You know, they weren't, they didn't have to go for coffee if they had other things going on, but they had that option to kind of chat with someone who'd been through it and who wasn't kind of old lady, you know, boss man. <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. And that went over really well with the new staff because then when they got to staff training, they had someone that they knew and recognized and they could kind of, you know, feel more comfortable. Cool. Yeah. I think Travis says, as we're in a, a unique position where uh, most of our staff are within an hour to an hour and a half of our location and lesser away at university. So it appears we have a lot of high school staff as well as some university staff. I think that we are slowly tweaking things to be um, more meetups in the winter of last year's staff and potentially new staff. Uh, one of the things we discussed recently, you and Beth and, and myself and, and Matt were all at Buckeye recently. And I got this thought, Buckeye Leadership Workshop is, is a, a, a great conference that more camp people could, could use. It's different than anything you've ever experienced, trust me. Um, but there, what you see are you see large groups of youth coming from, um, 
from 4-H county sort of organizations. And what that has inspired me to think of, because I'm I've I've stepped away from Buckeye for the year of committee. Um, what it's caused me to think of is, can I find, um, let's say, seven to ten youth who are longtime campers with us as Pierce Williams, who are approaching their CIT year, so will be in grade nine next year, and can I somehow find funding to take all of them to Buckeye? and see how that works over the next five to six years with training and teamwork and how they bring that back to their camp staff. Because it's a totally different game if you can get a core group that is just so positive and so inclusive and able to pass that on to the rest of your staff. And so that's one of the tweaks I'm, I'm just exploring uh, right now. Right. Cool. One one thing I would add, and and maybe I do take input from all of you. One thing I would add is is um, you know in this conscious community that you create ahead of time, we are lucky enough to have these electronic tools um, that that we didn't have ten years ago. Um, one of the things I have found, and and I often get asked how to manage an online community because of Camp Rose and what's happened there. Uh, and one of the things I think that's part of encouraging this or or teaching people that there's value in returning to the online community, not not just the paperwork, but as Joe said, he's dropping thoughts in there all the time, and um, is to ask a prompting question. So Angie talked about in the intro videos how you, you asked them a, um, what's it called, Angie, an either-or question? What's that? Uh, would, would you rather. Would you rather, there you go. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, so asking something that prompts them, it's not a yes or no question that ask, prompts people to ask, ask those questions. So I alluded already to how much conversation has been about how to manage your time this week. That's just because I dropped a question and then I thought I'd like to see what the community has to say to that. So I would, uh, I would encourage people to do that. What would be a, a question that you would ask your staff to engage them that's not directly about their job? I mean... I love the Lego question. Yes. <laughs> As you know, Travis, yeah. <laughs> I like to ask people what they would do with an unlimited amount of Legos. It's just kind of a fun, <laughs> a fun um, icebreaker. Yeah. Uh, we also, I think we did it more than one year, but one year in particular stands out. We asked um, if there was anything you were nervous about. So it did, it was kind of related to um, their job, but more specifically just about the summer. And one gal said uh, that she was nervous that there were going to be a lot of mosquitoes, which led to this wonderful conversation about how there's not that many mosquitoes. This is where they go. But then dragonfly week happens. Right. <laughs> so yep. All of the new staff got to hear about this magical dragonfly week. And so they it kind of turned into something people were excited about. So yeah, just asking those prompting questions can sometimes lead to some gems. Yep. That's totally cool. Yeah. We, um, we ask, um, we, we've always post our packing, like it's a staff packing list separate from our camper packing list. And then I really throw it to the returners of, to like just list their favorite things that they bring to camp that are the most useful yeah. because it's never what I put on the list. I try to like add yeah. every year and it, I never get to it. Um, and that is fun because it starts like a whole conversation and then the, the new staff tend to, to chime in and ask lots of questions and uh, it's a good conversation. It is. Yeah. What would you ask Joe? Um, my, my favorite thing to ask is often about what music or what book they're reading. Yeah. Um, because it tells you the sort of person they are and if they can communicate that. Um, I ask that as an interview question as well, but I also like to ask just, you know, strange, strange things. Um, I don't even know right now off the top of my head. I'm always amazed at staff um, who find out something new. There's so many things as longtime camp people that we know are just useful. And during the summer, staff are like, man, I wish I had known about that. Right. Yeah. So the idea of a headlamp instead of a flashlight seems to me to be something I've just known for 25 years. Right. But when people see you walking at them with a headlamp on, they're like, wow, like, where do you get one of those? And I was like, pretty much anywhere. But um, <laughs> so we started to ask what people have found useful at camp. Yeah. Right. And what they would put in their, um, their creativity bucket. We have this uh, session that we do every few years where we give all of our staff a five gallon pail 
And the five gallon pail with a lid is essentially everything they can use to entertain a group of kids, to debrief stuff, to whatnot. It becomes a seat if they need to sit on it, right? It's just something they can carry around and decorate as their own thing, which started years ago when I did leadership conferences in the early nineties. And, and the, the idea is, you know, what would that go in your bucket, right? Like yeah. do you, so when I pull out of my bucket yo-yos, that's, that's evident when, they realize that my, you know, that I have a website, Yo Yo Joe, and that that I don't have a camp name, but they, you know, if I did, chances are it would be something about that. So I just I ask them what they find useful and what they find entertaining, um, and then I ask them if they can guess my favorite cheese. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite cheese? Yeah, I want to know. You you have to guess. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with Gouda. Blue cheese. Nope. Nope. I'm sure that it's somewhere online. Good luck finding it, people. <laughs> Search Joe favorite cheese. I had a, I, a quick story. We had a, a camp staff member whose cat name was Cheesy, and he took two summers to figure out what my favorite cheese was. Um, Hilarious. But in the end, he he figured it out. So, um, yeah. Excellent. I'll leave it that. You know, we have to be entertaining. Yes, let's make it a, uh, a treasure hunt for <laughs> Camp Hot Wheels. Where's Joe's favorite cheese <laughs> in the fridge? <laughs> Dan, do you have a, a favorite prompting question to ask? Um, I do like to um, ask about music because I usually surprise people with my taste in music. I, I yeah. don't yeah. know if I'm typecasted because I'm a dad, but uh, uh, when I put on Instagram story that I love the new Cardi B album, the amount of messages I got was pretty amusing. Um, <laughs> but um, I, um, I, yeah, music is a go-to. Um, when we're, if we're talking about work, I try to engage in the creativity side more. So like if you had a million dollars, what would you buy for camp? If, yeah. Uh, you know, um, really try to start to get them to think uh, limitless for lack of better words. I've I really been reflecting on uh, on the uh, keynote from ACA National, um, uh, Dan Heath with Magic Moments. So I yeah. actually was going to um, the email I'm writing to my staff later, my leadership staff with this podcast episode I found, um, is going to be about how this summer we want to create magic moments. And I want you to come in thinking what's a magic moment you can create on a daily basis for somebody. Um, you know, and um, that's typically what we go to like it's usually what we're reading i, I mean i just I just start james james comey's new book so i'm not going to be asking questions about that but, uh, <laughs> but yeah um that's typically where my questions kind of come from right right um so one last question on this before we move on to the tool of the week if you had um it, you had one thing, you had one thing that you want staff to know, whether it's a sort of come in with this philosophy or bring this thing. What is, what is a one essential that you want staff, to, what message, one essential message you want to get across today for staff for the summer? How would you, uh, how would you do that? What would you prioritize? I, um, uh, years ago I wrote about this and my, big thing is we're in the business of making memory. That's what we do. And whether or not that memory is positive or negative, you're still affecting the business, right? So we want to focus on those positive memories over the course of the year, but they need to know that every interaction can change a kid's life. Travis, you know this, right? You know that one counselor saying one thing to you can change the rest of your life as a camp person. The way one counselor handles your anger at a moment in time can change the rest of your yep. life. The way somebody flippantly pushes you off can also change the rest of your camp life. So we're in the business of making memories and you need to be careful to make sure that every interaction is, is trying to create a positive memory of camp for those kids. That's the, and, and that's heavy, that's heavy stuff. But you know, I normally talk a bit about that at the end of staff training right? That, you know, you now have a day before campers arrive, put this in your brain bucket and figure, figure out how you're going to move forward, yeah. knowing that this is, you know, this is what we're doing here. Everything we did this week is in training is about creating lasting memories that are positive. Yeah. Thank you. I think for uh, me, it would be that, um, 
we want them to succeed. You know, we're rooting for them. We're yeah. supporting them. Um, we're, tr- we're setting them up for success. And so if, if they have that knowledge going in, they're going to be confident and um, hopefully <laughs> and, uh, and feel secure that, you know, they, it's, it's okay to fail and that we're not going to, you know, berate them or um, yeah. fire them or anything like that. So yeah, just that we're, we're supporting them. Excellent. Thanks, Patty. How about for you, Dan? Yeah, um, sit along the same lines, um, just reiterating the message that uh, we were, we're confident in the hiring decision we made and that we believe in them and that we're going to do our best to take care of you as if we want you to take care of the kids and that um, we just need you to be committed and here. Um, the biggest thing is just making sure that they, they walk in the door and know that they're, they're here to work and here and we will graciously take care of them in that. Um, and that if you try to schedule two online classes while you're at camp, it's <laughs> probably not going to do well. And I'm seeing this more and more with camp staff yeah. um, saying, I think I could do an online class. And I'm like, I don't think you should try. Um, no. you know, um, we haven't made it part of their contract that they can't do it. But um, I, I'm watching this trend grow, particularly with the staff. So it, we always go back to you have to be committed to here. If you're committed to here, we will take care of you all the way. You have nothing mm-hmm. to worry about. Mm-hmm. How about for you, Angie? What do you? Um, this about? summer in particular, I would want my staff to hear that they need to get really comfortable with being uncomfortable. I mm-hmm. have a big turnover year, so right. I have three returning staff. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the rest of mine that I've ended up hiring are pretty young. So yep. uh, really echoing off of uh, kind of what everybody else said, which is like, you know, you we don't expect you to know how to do this job yet that's what the week of training is for and that we hired you for you and that being a camp counselor has way more to do with like how you show up and who you be right. in your essence than it does knowing you know all these little details um so that we're confident in them and it's gonna be fun so, yeah 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 that's funny i um my my thing is kind of the same. It's like we're we will we will. Let me say that sentence without that. Um, we expect you to do hard things, and we're going to ask you to do things that you may not think you're capable of. But we know from experience that you, that you're capable of, and we're able to judge what you're capable of. And so, as long as so, that's my thing. We're going to expect you to do hard things, and we will we won't do things that we know that you that you're not capable of. I would of course do the training involved in that so that, um, that they know that we'll be there support and we prove to them that we can support them. But, uh, that, that I think is, is the one thing I would share. All right. I'm going to, to move us on unless anyone raises a finger because they have one last thing they would like to say about this topic. Patty, please. <laughs> um, just that one of the things that we did one summer was, uh, prior to, it might've been like kind of anywhere between February and and May kind of thing when camp started, but we asked staff for um, the camp that I worked at uh, previously was an Easter Seals camp for people with disabilities. And so we asked staff to send us a photo, to do a Google search, send us a photo of someone with a disability. Mm. And that was it. And that, and we turned that into a training workshop. And it yeah. was so exciting for them when they got there and they were like, what are you doing with the picture? And they were all kind of wondering. And it, it created some excitement and buy-in in the preseason because they yeah. were like, they're up to something. So right. just little, little tweaks like that, I think, are, um, are useful. Yeah, just, you know, involving them. Creating mystery is so powerful. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Dan? Yeah. Um, uh, if you can't pull off any of this and you're overwhelmed and you, this is all, this list is great, but you can't do it, the simplest thing you could do is just individually message your staff and yes. ask them how are they. Just yes. go back to being a considerate person and ask them how they are. I can't tell you how many times I know somebody post somebody on something online and there's some in context and I just wrote, Hey, I just wanted to check in and see how you are and nothing unprompted other than that. And that it goes back to relationship building. Um, that, that gets them more yes. excited for camp than anything else. Yeah. Amen. I, and I've written this down, forgot to say that um, I, I love that idea so much. Um, I know that camp directors are getting amazing 
feedback and and connection with their stuff that's coming to camp by send by using that Bonjoro app that I talked about before um, that allow you to send free personalized videos to people. And you can find the link to that in the show notes, but it really accomplishes that one thing. It's like, if I can be thoughtful to this one person, it takes me 60 seconds and can have an impact, as Joe said, that you can have an impact that lasts and lasts um, just by proving that you're a thoughtful person and that you care about the relationship as Dan said. So great place to leave that off. Thank you, Dan. Uh, so then at this time, we're going to move on to our tool of the week. So if you are are joining for the first time, if you've been drawn in because you're a friend of Angie's or you listen to Patty's uh, podcast and you're here for the first time, uh, our tool of the week is we ask each panel to bring something to the discussion that makes them a better camp director. And um, Angie, I'm going to make you go last because I like yours so much. Um, And it's been a pleasure to watch your tool work for you this year. I am in... Uh, this is a discussion with Joe too. Joe, one of your long, long term um, tools of the week was a Levenger pocket briefcase, shirt pocket briefcase. Um, yeah, yeah. Still. Did you still use yours? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, awesome. So that is a, a tool that we'll throw in there uh, as a repeat because it's a good one. But I found a um, an inexpensive version. Uh, because I live my life with um, recipe cards available for all sorts of stuff. I found a $12 version of it that's plastic. It's not leather. And I don't imagine it would last much more than one season, but for $12, it's okay with me. <laughs> um, uh, it is just a, a, a thing I throw in my back pocket with space to jam some stuff in. But the real magic is that I have space to hold lots of recipe cards for taking my own notes, for notes to pass off. Uh, to people, in our case, passing notes back and forth to Beth, but as a camp director, I would be um, always leaving notes for people of appreciation or um, you know stuff that we agreed on to do, or if staff showed up to a discussion without their own pen and notebook, I would give them a recipe card and um, give them um, some instructions to do that. So I'll put that in there. It's called uh, the Oxford, um, I don't know, it's like the Oxford note card hold all or something like that but you'll see it in the, in the things. Are you going to add something to that, Joe? I was just trying to think, Travis, of how long um, Kix was my camp director. And when she left, she gave me um, a Levenger. It's a wallet uh, with the note cards in it. And I think I'm seven or eight years into using it. And it literally looks almost brand new. Um, And so if, if, if you do want to, something that's going to last long term i wouldn't have any problem recommending it again yeah it's it's expensive though it's um yeah. 60 yeah, to yeah. 80 bucks american um for it but uh it's real leather and it'll last forever and yeah yeah cool thank you um so joe what is your tool for today my tool for today is um is tempered glass covers for your cell phone I know that I don't always bring the most exciting tools of the week, but what I try, what <laughs> I try to Joe. do is figure out, well, what I try to do is figure out something that I actually use every day that I don't think about. And Travis, you and I for years have had this conversation, right, where you forget about something and that, and you're like, well, everybody should know about that. Yes. Um, I put, I think I started with my Nexus. This my Nexus is two and a half, three years old now. Um, and I started with it putting tempered glass covers on. I've never broken a phone screen on any of my phones, um, but my kids had on old iPods that or old iPhones that we had had broken it. So when we replaced theirs two years ago, the deal was you have to have a tempered cover on and you have to use one of our the cases I approve. And it's literally um, their phones. When I take that tempered glass cover off, it they look brand new. And I've met so many camp people and so many professionals with air quotes professionals who if I would if if you bring your phone out in front of another professional and it's got a fully cracked screen you're not going to look as professional as you think <laughs> um, and so what I would argue Neva Balso is that you should get a tempered glass cover for your phone um, and there I just checked on Amazon for an iPhone 8 they're 1099 for two of them Canadian. So I can only assume they're dramatic, drastically cheaper in the States. Um, 
but it's it's literally keeps your phone when you pop it off to put a new one on you're like i don't need a new one because my phone looks new but if i don't put a new one on i'm gonna crack the screen yeah excellent thank you joe Mm -hmm. uh patty what's your tool of the week Mine is such a simple thing. Um, It's a gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a huge, huge fan of showing gratitude and just, you know, being grateful in life. Um, But it it made a huge difference for me at camp. So at the end of the day, you know, you've had a long day, you've been working for 18 plus hours potentially, and um, you just want to go to bed and you're kind of grumpy because whatever happened. But if you can sit down and write down five things that you're grateful for, just five things, then... um, it can really change your perspective on the day and just focusing on those positive things. And so I, you can buy them, but I just use kind of a little notebook that I, you know, bought at the dollar store or something and typically will fill like a page or two. But I think even just starting that practice of doing five things, sitting down for two minutes um, makes a world of difference in terms of, again, back to the self care piece, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Gratitude journal. I keep mine beside my desk. Hey, nice. <laughs> Thanks, Patty. Uh, Dan, what's your tool? Sorry, I, had, no I was on mute. Um, I <laughs> have the Emerging uh, Task Planner, so I pick one of these up um, every spring. Um, it is uh, a notebook that, is essentially what Gab is doing with her staff manual, is pre-filled in, um, in terms of uh, framing your tasks. So um, I, I really appreciate it because basically every day I could I, I find a lot of solace in looking at what I did the day before and, mm-hmm. and seeing that I did accomplish something and then um, helps me reprioritize the next day. So basically I just use a page for each day and then um, it's great. As, as the day goes on, I add more tasks. Then the next day I just revamp it and uh, it, goes, it goes well. Cool. Excellent. Thanks, Dan. Uh, so Angie, you have a cool tool that you've been using a lot uh, since the new year. I have, yes. So I've been uh, I've been using Facebook Live, and at first couldn't quite convince my uh, boss to use it for our camp. So I just kind of jumped off on my own side project and created a social media platform called Heart of Educators to really encourage um, educators, both school teachers, camp people, anybody, to remember that we have to self care. Which I think, as an industry, we're not really great at, which I think is fun that we talked about it so much today. Yeah. Um, and to remember, like, we hold space, so we really have to kind of clear out our own selves so that we can guide everybody else and do the best we can at that. And so I started Facebook Live basically to just kind of start throwing out little tidbits. And it's been really fun because, one, I saw how much it can reach and how far it can go. And i ultimately feel like I don't know what I'm doing. So (laughs) uh, I think that you can really utilize it uh, as a camp director to engage uh, your parent community, your alumni community. Um, It's also helped me become even better at having a really clear, concise message. Um, And um, it's also just helped like me Um, we're really small. So I, as a camp, um, I really miss teaching during the year. I miss that engagement. And so it's also helped me just give myself something to be able to teach and engage with people that I was missing for so many years as I was like running the site and everything. So it's been, uh, it's been a fun little adventure, but Facebook Live is definitely a pretty cool tool. And I think that it could be utilized to, to engage with your camp community. Yeah. And um, have you found that people are watching and rewatching staff or rewatching the videos that you've done? Uh, yeah. I, I, what I found is that I don't really have a whole lot of people besides people I know, like my friends or yeah. my family that'll at the moment that'll pop on while I'm doing it, which um, is actually helps me because I, it's a little less nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, and that then on the engagement wise, um, I get some shares, I get some comments and um, just mostly a lot of views. So still kind of learning that aspect of how to, to even increase the engagement further, but um, I'm seeing that people really are, I'm getting a lot of views and a lot of watches on it. Right. 
And, and Angie, do you use the scheduling feature in Facebook so people can sign up to get reminders and things? Or do you just say, I'm going to be on at this time? Uh, right now, I just say that I'm going to be on at this time. Um, and then I will usually reshare it. So yeah. I might wait um, and, and then reshare it. And it usually helps kind of with the algorithm to yeah. pop back up. But also Facebook really likes their own videos. So you have to either use live or upload directly to Facebook. Like uploading YouTube videos to Facebook is not going to help you out yeah. at all, all right. um, with their algorithm. Cool. I've certainly found from mine, if you can schedule it with your page and okay. or your group, it will send out notifications quite well. The other thing that's probably not very commonly known, but with Zoom, you can do this style of Facebook Live where you bring in others and you're hosting it to your page. So you can have a panel, you could bring in some senior staff or some alumni um, to help your um, you know, lessons from alumni for your camp staff. There's lots of great tools for it. So um, I am 95% sure that even happens with the free Zoom that you can uh, do the live stuff. So um, Dan says yes that you can use it as that way. So thank you, Angie. I, I love watching it. It was fun to, to tune into a couple of those this year um, and uh, and see it while it was live. So I appreciate that. Awesome. Angie, if people have follow-up questions from stuff you've said or about your Facebook Live experience, how should they uh, reach out to you? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Heart of Educators. And my email uh, at camp is the best way to email me. It's Angie at CampLandryCreek.com. There we go. Angie, I thank you for, for being here. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Uh, Patty, how can people reach out to you if they uh, have questions? People can find me at thecampnerd.com and as the Camp Nerd across all social media. And from my website, you can get to Patchwork and the podcast and all that stuff. Excellent. Well, thanks for being on for this first time, Patty. It's great. Yeah, thanks so much for inviting me. It was fun. It was a pleasure. Joe, how, uh, how can people follow up with you? The best way um, is probably just through my website. So yo, yo, Joe, Y O Y O J O E.com, which leads to social media. Um, and you can see what we do here at Pierce Williams by going to camp is better.com. Life is good. Camp is better. Excellent. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Dan. Yeah. Um, so I work at Frost Valley YMCA. So it's frostvalley.org. And uh, you just email me at camp director at frostvalley.org. Or you can find me on social media at Dan Loves Camp and um, all the handles on that one. So, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, uh, I thank you all for, for being a part of this. I really enjoyed this discussion. I feel like I, every time I say, I really love this discussion. Um, so, thank you all for being here. Thank you for being a, a listener or a YouTube watcher. We always appreciate any comments that we get or any feedback. You can send that to Travis at camphacker.tv. Um, and thanks for letting your awesome out, Camp Mavericks. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the evening, friends. Mm -hmm.